Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. It is your daily Chelsea news update here. Six things we learned from Chelsea 5. Yeah, we scored five goals in a football game. Wrexham, 0-0 is out on the channel. Top link in the description. iCard up there if you want to see it. It was uploaded about 4 a.m. UK time, so I totally understand it if those of you in Europe missed it. But what a game it was. I want to talk a little bit about that match first of all before we get into the stories of Aubameyang, Stamford Bridge redevelopments. We're going to talk Mark Gurhey and we're also going to talk about a new striker that Chelsea may be bringing in this summer. But the game last night was so exciting. I think the reason it was so exciting is because there are instant things that we're seeing that are Pochettino-esque things. Improvements in the final third, combinational play, when it came to players that haven't even played together before, Ian Matson playing in an advanced role with Cucurella deeper, cutting inside, linking up with Nicholas Jackson, a striker, who we had questions about. Was he going to be ready? We can't really tell from a game against Wrexham. Nkunku comes on, scores a wonderful goal as well. Chile gets on the score sheet. Gallagher looks like an absolute machine, a player that's probably going to go under the radar until we start the Premier League season. We see what he can do, what his role is. Under Pochettino, we learned a lot from that game yesterday, so check out the six things we learned video if you want to see my first initial reactions. It's always a very reactive series. I don't allow myself the time to really think about it, but I definitely missed Angelo Gabriel deserved a box. The way that he kind of just fit into that Chelsea team like a perfectly fitted glove onto one's hand. He was magnificent, and the directness of that attack and even Sterling, with the assist for the Gallagher goal, Matson, who's a left-back but was playing in an advanced role, scores two. Everything about Chelsea's fluidity in an attacking sense yesterday was excellent. I'm absolutely buzzing with the result. Not going to do player ratings until the Premier League starts because there's so many players to go through. And I'll just pick out the six things, pick out the main talking points, like we're doing here in this video before we get into the news. Overall... Five goals. To see Chelsea score five goals in a game, I don't remember the last time we scored five. So even in a pre-season friendly, we always miss it when Chelsea are playing, whether it's pre-season or not, World Cups in the middle of the season. Watching England, great, but I want Chelsea there. And last night, or this morning for me, watching that game, it was a breath of fresh air to just even see link-up between players that haven't been playing together before have been training, but the predominant focus has been fitness-based training. And to see what they were doing with the ball, I think we've got a hell of a lot to be excited about here. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but it was very positive indeed. Speaking about positive moves, Aubameyang has agreed to join Olympic Marseille. Here we go, has been confirmed by Fabrizio Romano. Aubameyang signs a three-year deal. That will take him to being 37 years old until June 2026. Chelsea will let him leave for free, told Orba he will arrive tonight in Marseille camp and undergo medical tests on Thursday. This is good. Aubameyang, to give him some credit, right, he was brought in sentimentally by Tuchel, they worked together before, Tuchel gets fired immediately after. Aubameyang is probably thinking, I don't know if I'm going to get played here. Graham Potter freezes him out because he had an obsession with Kai Havertz, which is mind-blowing, which is also probably why he's not at the club anymore. Aubameyang never kicked up a fuss. He didn't cause a stir in the dressing room, which was my biggest concern about him, which is what we saw at times at Arsenal under Arteta. He didn't do that. He was very respectful. And I think Chelsea letting him go on a free is testament to that. Lukaku can rot. He can absolutely rot in the depths of the sewers underneath Stamford Bridge, for all I care. Because... There are ways to go about treating your parent club, the club that pays your wages. Sumba wants to say hello again, like he did. Second appearance of the day, he's got his second cap on GBFC. Aubameyang was different. And Chelsea letting him go for free is great because we're not trying to spend time negotiating to squeeze like a 2 million, 3 million if we're lucky from Marseille for this. We know Aubameyang doesn't have a future at the club. We know that he wants to move. He's not part of the plans under Pochettino. So we just let him go. And I think this is good. And it sets a precedence moving forward about how we prioritise negotiating, even though we've got a big team working on sales, incoming transfers, I hope. But the fact that we just let him go, when we know that it just could have been one of those where we're just trying to wring a flipping dry sponge, to be honest. Aubameyang has gone, and I wish him all the best, to be fair. We move 
Into story number two. Chelsea have beaten 13 other offers to buy Sir Oswald Stoll Mansions next to Stamford Bridge for the stadium redevelopment. However, all options remain open, RE Stadium, and a nine-week consultation period. So basically, I'm going to show you an image on the screen now which shows the land that Chelsea are looking to purchase and acquire in order to allow us options when it comes to redeveloping the existing Stamford Bridge. That's what I believe is the plan here. The only issue with this is it would still require Chelsea to develop stand by stand, which would see us need to find an alternative place to play our home games for five years. With the stadium redevelopment, you're not gonna please everybody. If it's in a new location, the people like myself who are, have an affinity, a connection to Stamford Bridge, we wanna stay there, but at the same time, like if we've gotta do it stand by stand, then we're also gonna to have to be relocated for a while. It needs to happen. Chelsea are a massive club. We need to be on par when it comes to match earnings day by day with Tottenham's, Arsenal, City, Man United, Liverpool. We need to be competitive there. And Stamford Bridge, as iconic as it is, as beautiful as it is, as momentous as it is in Chelsea's history and the folklore of our club, we do need to expand. We need to build. We need to grow with the ages, with the times, with the fans, with the global development of what we are as an entity. So. Let's see, it looks as though we're gonna get this piece of land. We'll talk about this more as we understand directly what the precursor is of what happens next. We move into discuss Mark Gurhey. Okay, we sold him to Crystal Palace not too long ago. Chelsea interested in Crystal Palace's 50 million rated Mark Gurhey. Arsenal and Tottenham also like the defender. It remains hugely conditional on fees involved and if Pochettino feels he has enough quality already after pre-season. I'm not going to jump the gun here and say Bashir Humphreys is ready. We don't need to spend that 50 million. He was very good in the game against Wrexham. Trev comes on, class act, as he always is. We're going to talk about him in a later video. 50 million for Mark Gurhey. At this moment in time, this is a situational moment here when it comes to my reaction within the Chelsea news. That's what I'm here to do, not break the news. Discuss, give my opinions on the news. At the moment, I need to see Caicedo signing. I need to see Moises Caicedo in a Chelsea shirt. I also feel as though we might still need a keeper. We might still need a striker. So at this point in time, when I see centre-backs that were absolutely not on the agenda at the beginning of this window, when the stuff on the agenda hasn't been finalised yet, 50 million on a player that we sold just leaves a really sour taste in my mouth. Mark Gurhey is a great footballer. I think he's been brilliant for Crystal Palace, brilliant in the England setup as well. But 50 million quid is not a small chunk of money. Crystal Palace aren't going to do Chelsea any favours here. There wasn't the option right now for Chelsea to be sure that we've got enough centre-backs. I think, with no European football, one game a week, I think that having Silva, Chalaba, Badia Shield, Colwell could work as long as they all stay fit. My concern is... Badia Shield's injury record, Silva's age, leaves us with two centre-backs. And with Chelsea's injury records, that could easily become one. So, a fifth one. Is Bashir Humphreys ready? Not sure yet, don't think so. Alfie Gilchrist, not sure yet either. Pretty much certain he's not. Mark Gurhey for 50 million. I think Chelsea are going to need to look around here. I think 50 million could be too steep. But Pochettino knows he's got four more pre-season games. He's had one. He's got four more to go. Clean sheet in the first one. Let's see what he thinks come the end. I think it's not a priority right now for Chelsea to sign a new centre-back. I do like Mark Gurhey, I really do. But 50 million, I'm not sure. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. And the final story that I'm going to discuss here, Chelsea are set to make a 27.7 million bid to sign Eli Wahi. They plan to send him to Strasbourg, but this is not the player's will. Guessing he looks at the market right now at Chelsea Looks at Jackson, looks at Broya, Broya's not ready. In Kunku, number 10, was brilliant there. The end of the game against Wrexham. Why he's probably thinking, well, if I sign for Chelsea for 27.7 million, that's not cheap. We're clearly buying here a decent striker who was great last season from Montpellier in France. So why he's probably looking at this and he's like, well, Fafana's gone on loan. They've already bought him. Nicholas Jackson is set to stay. If I'm going on loan, what does that mean? Does that mean Chelsea are going to buy another big name striker? Am I just going to be the Batshuayi at Chelsea Football Club? I would think if Chelsea are buying Wahi 
and he gets loaned out, I absolutely understand why this wouldn't be something that the player wants. When you look at only Nicholas Jackson and Broya being out and out strikers at Chelsea, why he's not going to want to sign and just get loaned out to Strasbourg? Yeah, it could be for one year. He stays in France. He gets even more numbers than the great numbers he got at Montpellier last season. But I still wouldn't put it past Chelsea going for a Vlahovic, going for another striker, which would make this a segue move for Wahi that just doesn't have any visionary longevity for him. Good player. And I just wonder if it's too much of a gamble to have three young, pretty much unproven strikers as the out-and-out -out strikers recognised at Chelsea Football Club this season. I don't know if that's the right way. I understand it's part of the long-term project of the club acquiring as much young talent as they possibly can to build for the future. But we also need to prioritise right now. We need to improve this team. Sumba really wants in on the video. He just loves a bit of camera time, doesn't he? What a gorgeous geezer. Found him in a bush, by the way, covered in fleas. We saved his bloody life. And I just hope that the Chelsea board here save Pochettino and get this business done. I've managed to go an entire video pretty much without talking about Moises Caicedo. So before I start trying to give you updates that aren't updates, we're going to curtail this Chelsea News video here. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. It feels amazing to be back making videos every day again. And with Chelsea playing, that is even more of a reason to be excited. Thank you for watching your third video will be out later on today. So stay tuned to GBFC. Turn on that little bell next to the subscribe button so that you get a ping to your phone when I've uploaded so you can be one of the first in the comments. Carrying on the discussion. Come on, you blues.